This is uh, Scott Stengel, Melco Applications, here with my friend, Nate Moore. Hey. Uh, today we're going to give you a little bit of help on uh, how to install alphabets of different types into Design Shop. We get a fair amount of calls on this. Probably the most have to do with um, how do I uh, get a true type font you know, to show up in Design Shop. So we're going to show you the different uh, ways to do that. First of all, uh, let's talk quickly about the different alphabet types. Um, your, your best alphabet um, is going to be with an extension of .ofa. Um, that's what your 140, 160, whatever it is, alphabets, most of them are with that extension. So what is that file? It's one file, and it contains all the embroidery characters in, um, in that alphabet. Each character digitized by a person with knowledge of embroidery on how lettering should go in different size ranges and all that. Um, and so the characters are usually made differently based on the size range that the alphabet is uh, projected to run in. Believe it or not, it's a couple day job to complete by the time you get the artwork and get it all prepped. It takes a day of digitizing. You have to sew out all the characters, edit them. Um, it's quite a process, but when you're done, you get uh, an alphabet that you can arc, you can uh, stretch out, you can slant forward, you can shadow, you can two-color, you can do all sorts of awesome stuff to it. So um, that's your best choice is going to be an OFA alphabet. Second kind, very popular today too, is the true type alphabets. True type is uh, it's one file, but it doesn't have any embroidery uh, associated with it. It's all vector or print uh, type shapes. It's not designed for embroidery. Um, it's how everything in your computer, uh, you know, that you see the, the the words and all. That's how they're made is by true type fonts. So when you go to email and you want to change to uh, from Arial to Calibri or something like that, that's all those are true type fonts. <clears throat> the way Design Shop works is whatever true type fonts are installed into your computer will automatically show up and you can uh, run them as letters and they will convert to embroidery um, as, as you run them. Um, <clears throat> so Design Shop converts the vector to stitching based on automatic conversion, just like if you have the, <clears throat> the features to auto-convert vectors to stitches. It's basically done the same way. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of benefits to the true type fonts. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, very cheap. Um, download them from all sorts of sites everywhere. There's so many tens of thousands of different fonts and all that stuff that are available. Um, the problem we run into probably the most, other than how do I install the alphabet, the true type, which we're going to get into in a second here, is some true type fonts work um, with Design Shop and some don't. There are different kinds, um, and uh, Nate is our graphics guru here, and so I'm going to just let him explain the, the different types um, real fast to you. So when you're looking at a font, site and you're looking at options for download, um, different fonts will have different options. Um, right now one of the newer ones, and it's a really handy one to have, is an open, tri open type uh, font. And what that has is some, it's like true type beefed up. It's got the vector outlines, but then it's got other things that, that we may or may not understand. Um, and the, the biggest thing to look at when you're looking at those is make sure that the fonts that you're downloading have true type outlines because those are those vector shapes that we're actually going to use. Open type can have two different flavors. One is open type with true type outlines. That's great. We can use that. The other is open type with postscript. And that is not something that Design Shop will see. So you can load it into your folder uh, for Windows. You can type with it in an email, you can use it in a word processor, um, you could use it in an artwork program, create artwork with it, but Design Shop's not going to see it because it's got that postscript element to it. So open type is fine as long as it has true type outlines. True types, if they're real true types, you're good to go. Um, occasionally with uh, open type, 
uh, some programs will be open type aware where if you type two letters beside each other, it will sub out those characters for a different <clears throat> set where there's a ligature that goes all the way through. So if you had um, and and a, an F and a T next to each other, that crossbar might go through both of them. And that's not something Design Chop's going to understand. So you may occasionally, if you're using one of those that has those ligatures um, or alternates, you may type something and it'll go, hey, I don't know what this character is. And that's why. Um, so for the most part, true type, you're good to go. Um, although it was never really meant for embroidery, so keep that in mind. Um, and then if you're using an open type, make sure that it has true type outlines. And when we go to install and show you how to install that, right. we'll show you how to double check that. Um, and it should be listed uh, when you go to purchase the font, uh, what style you're getting. So just make sure you're looking at that. Good. Thank you very much. Uh, there's a lot to that, I know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the <clears throat> I guess the third type. You know, I don't even consider an alphabet. We've talked about this in past sessions. Expanded file alphabets. They're they're popular. Um, and that is not an alphabet. It is basically you're buying, you know, let's say uh, 26, if you had all the capital letters of a font. You're buying 26 files. Um, each one has one letter in it. They're saved in expanded um so it's like each one is its own design and you are inserting them uh, in one, you're inserting additional files into one open file to spell out Melco or Scott or Nate or whatever. They're uh, painful. <laughs> They're, I mean, the digitizer has decided what type of underlay and density and all this stuff you knew that you need. It's not something that's easy to change. We've talked about expanded editing before. The good news uh, of those is um, they're cheap. Twenty cents a piece is what uh, I saw. Fifty of them, ten bucks. <laughs> That's so. You know there is a use for them, but they are not uh, alphabets, and so um, they don't have properties. And scaling is it is trouble above a certain point. So. We're not going to cover those because really they're what they are, um, and you can't do anything except insert them, scale them, and you're getting stitch processing and everything in the way, um, but they are inexpensive. Okay, so um, first, how do we install uh, OFA alphabets? Um, <clears throat> this is pretty simple, so let me uh, shrink, there we go, find the mouse, <laughs> shrink her down. So uh, I have my uh, OFA alphabet, and all I need to do is put it in the correct folder, um, the, the design shop installation, um, and there's an alphabets folder inside of there. Once I put it in there and restart design shop, that's really all that it takes. So here's Windows Explorer. I go to my Windows. I want to go to, by default, generally, Program Files x86. That's most computers now are 64-bit systems. If they're not, you would find it under Program Files. So if I expand that, and I look down the list, and I find Melco, expand that. I have usually Design Shop and Melco OS. So I expand the Design Shop. It's not going to be called Final. I just named it that way. But Design Shop v10 by default. There's an alphabets folder inside of it. So once I click on this, here is all the alphabets that I have um, in uh, my design shop um, installation. <clears throat> all I would do is drag over into this folder, copy, paste, whatever. And once I put it into here, and then um, all I need to do is restart design shop. Um, and it will tell me uh, you have uh, several new alphabets that don't have previews. Just hit yes, it'll make previews for them. And then you're like right here at the blank screen. Um, so to find them, um, I can go to my properties. And remember how we did everything in version 10, they're all set up in different categories based on uh, size range or uh, script versus block, all that kind of stuff. Where your uh, newly installed copied alphabets are going to go is going to be in the custom section. And you can scroll it right down to uh, the bottom. And there we go. 
was it? Did I? Yeah, okay, so here, so here's all the, it's going to be the last one that you uh, copied in here. So that's where you would find it. Another way to find it, of course, is to just go up here and type and start searching, and it's going to take you right to that font if you don't want to go the long way to find it in custom. That's what I typically do. Yeah, <laughs> search is great. Also, like we've spoken about in past uh, webinars on lettering, always use the stars when you can. Those are the newer alphabets. Um, the yield signs um, uh, are still good alphabets. They're just older, and so you, you can't push them as far. Here's the yield signs. Here's the uh, stars. Um, older technology to make them and stuff, so they're not as flexible as today's brand new alphabets are. Okay, um, so that's how to install OFA alphabets and how to search. Um, now we're do last the uh, how to install TrueType fonts. All right, so um, here I have downloaded, let's say, um, a true type font. And so to install it couldn't be simpler. The question we get here is people think that they can copy the true type font right into the alphabets folder and restart it and everything works. Nope, you can't find it. We actually have to take true type fonts and install them into Windows, and then Design Shop uses the, the Windows installed true type fonts um, to, to run them and convert them to lettering. So, like Nate said, there's a couple of choices. You just download the true type. Are they usually zipped when you get them? Uh, it depends on your source. Okay. Uh, maybe if you buy a pack or something like that, you might have to extract them first, which is simply right, right click, <laughs> extract all and uh, it'll put it into a folder. Then I can go into each font and if I right click I can go preview or I can double click a lot of different ways to do it and here shows the preview of the alphabet. So you could have also just right clicked and hit install but you would miss some kind of critical little bits right. here that I want you to look at. So in the kind of upper section of this you'll see the font name, you'll see the version, um, sometimes you'll see the, the software that they've created it with, the creator. We're looking at that bottom line now where it says open type layout. That means it's got that open type flexibility. Um, but then the biggest chunk I want you to pay attention to is it says true type outlines. Right here. So that means it's something that we can use in Design Shop, we can read, and we can go uh, play with, with embroidery. And then so. Uh... I would click on install or like I say double click install there's different ways to do it but you'll get her installed and then um, what happens when I do a, uh, an install here is it's actually going to go uh, here's control panel and we have uh, fonts and here is here are all the fonts that are installed um, you hit into a family. Yeah, I did into a family. But anyway, here, here, here are all the uh, true type fonts that are installed in this computer um, that in Design Shop can use the, the ones that have the outlines to mm -hmm. it. All right. So once I do the installation, I have to restart Design Shop because the alphabets are registered when you start Design Shop. So if you do this and you just you already have Design Shop running, you're not going to be able to see it. So just uh, shut it down, restart it, and then of course here um, the true types are going to be um, at the bottom list. And now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't I don't think with true types when they install new tr true types i don't think it's going to pop up with that same hey you have no previews oh yeah right i didn't it, it so that that window that pops up and right. scrolls and generates previews that's only you'll you'll only see that when you're uh, installing ofas those design shop alphabets if it's a true type it kind of is its own preview so it doesn't need to generate one so uh I get that true type fonts play a big role. You know, my my take is what I don't like that I've seen come through here is uh, people are having trouble with the design. You look at the font, they pick Arial true type font when there's already an Arial human digitized font inside their list or something really really close. So you 
always try and use the human digitized alphabets um, because the auto conversion it works but it's not a person and there's so many different um, uh, exceptions to rules that only people know it's just so hard to teach that all to the computer i'm going to throw you guys another caveat um, true types again weren't meant for embroidery some of them will work really really well some of them were meant to look like they were completely distressed and missing pieces and ragged. Oh, yeah. And so the outlines that create those shapes have a lot of input points, have a lot of information, and uh, that can really slow you down on your computer as it's trying to figure out what to do with all of those points. As it's trying to generate stitches for all of those pieces. Um, so one, it may not look that great in embroidery anyway. Number two, um, if your computer just doesn't have a ton of resources behind it, and sometimes even if it does, it can really, really slow you down with all those little notches taken out and all that removed uh, negative space. And it's all, all kind of over stuff. trying to accomplish these little dots that are, you know, part of the distress. So, thing, you know, yeah, yeah, so some of the newer kind of hipper uh, true types or open type that is out there are those hand-drawn, hand-lettering, uh, kind of trying to replicate that nice hand-drawn look. Um, some of them are smooth, some of them are rough. Just kind of choose your font carefully. Yeah, I mean, I've done, I've digitized distressed, you know, uh, letters and logos and stuff and of course you walk out to the little dots and back in some of them look like crayon or uh, i guess charcoal yeah. stuff comes out beautiful but um it really takes a person to make a logical sew sequence out of it I just like too. <laughs> so uh, again the quick review for the to install embroidery ofa fonts we just take and copy them into the design shop installation and in the alphabet folder restart design shop and they show up in the custom section at the bottom uh, of the list um, for true type fonts you got to install those through windows not through uh, copy them into the alphabets folder so once we right click and do install then we're gonna um, see the true type uh, in at the bottom of the list um, something that was asked uh, that is something you guys need to keep in mind. Um, not all alphabets, either the OFAs or true type fonts, are created equal. They don't all have the same character sets. Some have your standard Latin characters, some have characters with accent marks, some have Thai characters, katakana. There's all kinds of sets of characters that may or may not exist in that alphabet. Um, the question was, what happens if you type a character that doesn't exist? Oh, in the true type or the regular? Either okay. one. It does the same thing. It says, okay. hey, this, and then it shows you the character, doesn't exist in this character set, and then it totally doesn't appear on screen. Mm -hmm. it, usually it, you'll have a space there where it should you, be. Right? You might, yeah. yeah sometimes. It depends on how much information is there. <clears throat> and then another question we got was, um, where can you find OFA fonts? And typically, I would say from us. There's a package on shopmelco.com right now. Yep. Um, Ten of my best. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can also, if you were to create your own, um, you would have them that way too. Yeah, and you know, you got a couple of design shops at your facility, and you want to move an alphabet that you created that's only on one computer to the next, um, stuff like that. All right. Hopefully that I, helps. Any more questions? I don't think so. We're good. That. All right. Well, thank you for your time, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Thanks, you guys. Have a good day.